In today's video we're going to learn the basic CRUD operations of SQF Lite, which is just a implementation for Flutter for SQL Lite. And thank you Shannon Galloway for being the official sponsor of this video. You can check out the Patreon in the description. And before we begin, just a quick message from Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning tool where you can find over 27 different online classes ranging from design, business and tech. If you use my link in the description, you will get two months of free use, so be sure to check it out now. The link is in the description. So first off, we will create a class called database creator and then instantiate our database. I will just make it a global variable. And we're just going to create a class and then we're going to have a string. So for the first string, we're going to have for the to do table, which we'll use called to do. Then we'll have the ID for that to do, the name, the info, and then the is deleted. So this will be used to create the columns in the database and also to reference the to do table. So the first method we will use is the database log, which is just going to take a function name and also we'll have the SQL string. Then we're going to have two parameters and both of these are going to be optional. And the first one will be selected query result. Then for the second parameter, we're just going to have the insert and update query result. We will then start off by just printing first the function name. And then after the function name, we'll just start by printing the SQL string. After that, we'll make a if and just check if selected query result is not null. And if it's not null, we'll start by just printing the selected query result. We'll do the same for the insert and update query result with an else if. And if both of null, then we just wouldn't print them. For the other method, we're going to do the create to do table, which will just take a parameter of database. This is going to be a sync function and we'll start by creating the database string. And for, to do that, we're just going to do create table to do table. And then inside the parentheses, we're going to have the different values. So for the first column, we're going to have the ID, which is just a integer of primary key. And then for the name, we're just going to have text and same for the info. And then the fourth one, which is the is deleted will be a bit of not null. And bit is just a one or a zero. And then we just execute that SQL in the database execute function. Now for this method, we'll just call it the get database path, which returns a future of type string. The parameter of this will be the database name, and we will have a variable called the database path, which just waits the get database path. The second variable we will have is the path, which just joins the database path and our database name. And then we'll just check if the folder exists, and we do that with the if statement of awaiting directory, we're going to pass in the path and then use call the exist function. And if it does exist, we can call this delete database if we want to. Right now we don't actually want that, so we will comment that out. But anytime we want to actually delete the database, we can just uncomment that and start the method. Then for the else statement, we are going to use await and create it. And then after that, we'll just return the path of the database. Then for our init database function, we're just going to call our get database path and then call, pass in that to do database name. We'll just store that in our path variable. Now we can use to initialize our database variable with open database. The first parameter this would take is just the path that we created. And the second parameter we're going to use is use the version code. And then for the on create, which takes a database and int. We'll start by creating a function called onCreate. For the onCreate function, which is just a future of type void, we're then going to give it the parameter that it's asking for, which is the database and then the int. So we're going to pass that into our onCreate function. And then inside this function, we can just create our to-do table. Now for our to do class, we'll just give it the int of ID. And then for the second, we'll give it the name and then info and then also the is deleted, which is just a bool. Then we'll just create the basic constructor, which just takes the ID, the name, the info and then the is deleted, of course. Then for the second constructor, we'll just have the to do from JSON, which is also called from map many times. 
the, the parameter we're going to use is the JSON, which is just a map of type string dynamic. Then we're just going to initialize the variable with the JSON file. And to do that, we're just going to have the brackets and then call the database creator.id, which is just our static string we are going to use. And we'll do the same for our other variables. So for the name, info, and also the is deleted. And as we store the is deleted as a bit, which is just a one or zero, we'll just check it if it's equal to one, then this is going to be true, then the is deleted is true. Moving on to the repository service to do, we're going to create a get all to do's function, which is just a future list of to do's. We'll start by the SQL string, which is just a select all from the database to do table, where is deleted is equal to zero. Then we'll just pass our final SQL string in the raw query, which will return the data for us. And then we'll just create a to do list and then instantiate that as a empty list. As the data returned from our query is a list of map, we're just going to loop through that data and just call it node. Then we'll create our to do variable and then just use the to do from JSON and pass in our node. And then we're going to just add that to do to our list. And then in the end, we're just going to return those to do's. And then for the get to do, which is just a future of to do, which takes a int of ID. We'll just start by creating an SQL string, which is just select all from the to do table, where the ID is equal to ID we're passing in. Then we can execute that raw query and get the data back. And with that data, we can then later store that in the to do. And as raw query always returns a list of the data, we can actually just take that index of zero as we know that it's only one item matching. And then after that, we can just return the to do. And then for the add to do, which is just a future void, we'll take a to do as parameter. And now this string is a bit more complicated. We will start by inserting it into the to do table and we'll start by giving the names of the columns we're going to populate. The first column being the ID, the second one being the name, the third one being the info and the fourth one being the is delete. And just make sure that it's not a comma in the end there or else it will just result in an error. So for the next bit we're going to write is just passing the values and don't forget the parentheses. So the first value will be the same as the column, which is just the to do of ID and then the to do name. And as the name is in the database as a text, we're just going to surround that with quotation marks and we're going to do the same with the info. And then we're just going to use the ternary operator and just checking if the list is true, then we'll pass a one in the database. And if it's false, it would be a zero in the database. Then for the next bit, we're just going to use the raw query with our SQL and then we'll get the result. And then we're actually going to use our helper function, which will just print out the to do. We're going to start by passing the function name, which is just add to do. Then we'll pass in our SQL. And then for the next one, we just pass in null as we don't need that, as that is the select query and we're using a insert or update. Then we just pass in the result. So this will actually print in the console when you use the function. And then for the delete to do, we're just going to pass in the to do we want to delete. So we're going to start off by writing the SQL, which is just the update to do table. We're just going to set the is deleted to one, which is our case is true. And we're only going to do this where the ID is equal to the to do ID. And you can use the normal delete function. I just prefer updating it so you still have it in the database. And then for the raw update, we can use the SQL. And then we're just going to log that with the database log function. Moving on to the next function, which is just the update to do, which will just take a to do. For the SQL, we're just going to update the to do table and set the name equals to the new name of the object we're passing in. And we're only going to do this where the ID is equal to the ID of our to do. We're just going to pass that SQL to our raw update function, which returns the result from that. 
And then we're just going to database log it so we can always see it in the console when we update the to do. And then we're going to use the last function, which is just a to do count. So we can then in the UI, when we create a object, get the ID we're going to have right away. So to do that, we're just going to use a raw query and select count of all in the to do table. And then to get the count out of this, we're going to take the data of index zero, which is the first item in the list. And then we're going to take the first column in that list, which will return the count. And then at the end, we'll just return that count. You can find the UI in the GitHub repo or also the Firestore video. So for the first variables, we'll have a future list to do and also a ID. We're going to override the init state and then just to set the future to the repository service to do with the get all to do's. We're going to create our first function inside here, which is used the read data. And this will just call the repository service to do and get the to do. We're just going to pass the ID inside here. And then we store that in the to do. And this is just going to print the to do name in the console. So for the update to do, we're just going to pass the to do object. And we're going to set the to do name to please. And then we're just going to update the to do with the repository service to do function. After that is complete, we're going to set state with the future and get all to do's. Then for the delete to do function, we're just going to pass the to do we're going to delete. And then inside here, we'll just call our repository to do and delete that to do. After that, we're just going to set the state to ID of null. And then we're just going to set the future to get to do's. And the reason we're using set state like this is so that when the, we're using set state, the future builder will be rerun and not be rerun all the time when we're using set state. If you found this video helpful, make sure to check out the other video I made on Firestore for the CRUD operations. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel and also check in that bell notification icon. If there's something you'd like to see next, let me know in the comments and also be sure to check out Patreon down in the description and I will see you in the next tutorial. Bye.